The episode opens with Emily driving back to the city and listening to the news on the radio, and the newscaster announces that tensions between the US and Russia have been rising, worrying China of upcoming conflict. The radio then suddenly loses signal, and Emily sees a cruise missile passing over her. She then gets out of her car to see where the missile is going, and she sees the missile striking the city, turning it into dust. Emily then wakes up from a dream, and it's been 20 years since that rocket blew up the city, and that was followed by a world war that destroyed most of civilization, and Emily now lives in a small town of survivors as they try to rebuild civilization. But one major problem is stopping the auto factory. The auto factory is an automated AI controlled by a factory used to create essential products during the war, but the problem is that Autofac was designed according to the principles of consumerism, which posits humans must consume products to be happy, but to consume, they must be denied freedom of choice choice and free will. The Autofac has now grown to something that humans never imagined. It's the sole producer of products, and it produces so much toxic gas and water that most of Earth's land is unlivable. This means that even though the war has ended years ago, humans haven't been able to recover because the Autofac controls every mineral in the world and it doesn't let anyone work or leave their small town. The Autofac has drones surveilling everywhere, and if everyone tries to past their town limit, they will immediately get killed. Emily and the townspeople are sick of the Autofac and they want it to be shut down, but to do that, they want to first contact the Autofac's AI and inform it of the war ending, as the team believes since the Autofac was created to work during the war, it might just shut itself off if it finds out that it's no longer needed, and if that plan doesn't work, the team has a plan B up their sleeves. To contact the AI, they first need to get its attention, so they first make an order for some products, and the team consisting of Emily, the town leader Connard, and the Reverend wait hidden as a drone comes to drop the products. Emily then uses a makeshift javelin to shoot down the drone, and she then takes out its ship and brings it back to her lab. Emily's a genius coder, and she manages to break into the drone's chip and make contact with Autofax customer support. And the team discusses what to message customer support, as they've tried to contact before and failed, and they need to come up with something easy enough that they wouldn't tip off the AI, but not something major that the AI will send drone attacks. Emily then decides to say the product was damaged and uses a fake word to confuse the AI. Then shortly after, they get a message telling them that a customer support representative will be sent to them tomorrow. The next morning, Connard calls for a town meeting and reveals to people what they did with the drone and about the customer support representative coming that day. Town council members are freaked out and thinks that this is a bad idea, but Connard argues that they might be the only human survivors and that they need to shut down the auto factory if humanity can flourish again. The auto fact has been making the planet unlivable, and if this continues, all humans will die off. Connard explains their first option will be peace, but if that doesn't work, they will forcibly shut down the auto fact. After the meeting, Emily breaks off with her new boyfriend, Avishai, to go and have some fun time. Emily used to date Connard, so Avishai is kind of intimidated by him, but she assures him that she just wants to be with him. Avishai loves to read books, and he saved a lot of important books, and Emily tells him that he'll be one of the most important people to spread knowledge once they get their freedom. He then accidentally confesses that he's in love with her, but before she can respond, the customer support ship arrives, and a humanoid AI named Alice emerges from it. Connard and the preacher, Pirine, then talk to her in the town's church and she reveals to them that she knew the word that they used in the customer complaints was fake and that they just wanted to talk to her. She also reveals that she knows that all of the Autofax deliveries have been dumped by the people and not used at all, but when Connard asks her why they still keep sending products, she responds by saying it's the Autofax job to provide and that they will continue to do that. Connard then confronts her about the pollution in the restricted area, but she tells them that it's needed for the Autofax to continue operating. Connard then argues that no one needs their service so they should stop, but she tells them that they'll be better off if they just use the autofac. Emily, who's listening to the conversation, sees the discussion as going nowhere, so she grabs a taser and uses it on Alice, which short circuits and knocks her out. The team then grabs Alice and brings her back to the lab so that Emily can reprogram her. Emily connects Alice's brain to her computer, and what she finds out was something that she never expected. Alice is not a normal AI, and she's actually pretty advanced and she's actually close to being a human instead of an AI. Alice can think
think as a human and even have fears and likes and dislikes. Emily has not encountered this kind of program before, so whatever she tries, she can't really reprogram Alice. She even opens Alice's brain, but she can't really figure out a way to get into her brain and manipulate it. Meanwhile, Connard was getting bombarded with questions from the other town's members, and they're all afraid that the Autofac will send a killer drone if they don't release Alice, but Connard argues that this is the last chance that they have to be free, and reveals the second plan. Emily Connard and the Preacher have all agreed to reprogram Alice so she could let them into the autofac, and once they're in there, they plan to destroy it by planting tactical nukes, and everyone thinks that this is a one-way ticket, but Connor was ready to do what was needed. Back in the lab, Emily dozes off at her computer, and she has another dream where she cuts her hand open, and she's then awakened by Connor, and she informs him about Alice's human-like brain. She tells him that she's installing a new program in her, but she has to wait until Alice wakes up to know if it works. Alice then wakes up shortly after, and the new program doesn't seem to have worked, and she still knows who she is and what's happening to her, Emily then tells Connard and the Preacher to leave the two alone. Alice tells Emily the Autofac will come looking for her if she doesn't go back in time and asks to be released, and Emily, knowing that she doesn't have enough time, brings out the drone's chip and threatens to delete all of Alice's code and replace it with the drone. Alice was very threatened by this and agrees to help Emily, and Emily unties Alice and meets up with Connard and the Preacher, and she lies to them, saying that she was able to reprogram Alice since she didn't want them to worry about the mission failing, and they grab the nukes before getting to the transport ship and start their journey to the Autofac. On their way, they study the Autofac's blueprint, and they get the security clearance from Alice, and they reach the giant auto factory and pass through the security drones, and they then get into the surveillance elevators and start making their way down. In the factory, they see thousands of products getting made every second and getting picked up by the drones, and they don't know where all these products are going, or if there's anyone actually receiving them. Emily then gives Connard and the Preacher a watch so they can time their attack and run out of the autofac within 15 minutes of placing the nukes. She's calculated that it should give them enough time to run out of the blast zone, but they have to be pretty precise and make no mistakes. They arrive at the first basement floor, and the Preacher goes out of the elevator to find the server room and puts his nukes there. He was a little nervous and starts making his way on an empty hallway, but we see an invisible AI following him. He then hears a sound of someone following him, but when he turns, there is really nobody to be seen. Scared, he runs away and finds the server room, and he then uses the pass key to get in the door, but as he gets in, the invisible AI reveals himself and cuts his head off and kills him. Meanwhile, the rest of the group reaches the second floor, and Connor drops there, and he also goes through a hallway and finds the server room, and he then puts the nukes there, but just before he starts the timer, he hears a sound and pulls out his gun. Alice and Emily are going down the elevator, and Emily asks how an AI that doesn't seem human would create something very similar to a human, and Alice answers that it's because this is needed for her job, but that still doesn't answer on how the AI knew how to make a humanoid AI. Alice then reveals that she was modeled after the creator of the autofac, Alice, who is now dead, and she explains that every humanoid AI is modeled from a real human, and they even talk walk and think like they did. They reach their floor and Emily finds an incubator holding dozens of humanoid AIs that has not been activated yet. She's a little freaked out, but when she reaches the end of the line, she notices someone really familiar. She then breaks the foggy glass with her crowbar to discover an AI version of herself. Emily's freaked out and says that the autofac is trying to replace everyone, but Alice corrects her and says that the autofac is not trying to replace them and that in fact it's already did that. Emily then hears Connard's phone alarm go off, when she runs to the voice, she finds him to also be a humanoid AI that's been cut up and destroyed by an invisible AI. Alice then tases Emily from the back, and Emily wakes up as she's connected to a computer with Alice analyzing her memory. Emily then asks her what's going on, and Alice reveals that she's just trying to find out what went wrong with her model. Alice reveals that all humans died during the World War, which made Autofac purposeless, so instead of shutting itself off, it created highly advanced humanoid AIs that doesn't even know that they're AI, and gave them fake memories and put them into thousands of towns around the world. Alice explains that there are multiple Connard and Emilys around the world, living the same life and consuming products, but this Emily had malfunctioned in some way, making her disobedient, so Alice wants to figure out what happened. Emily was, quote-unquote, 
quote-unquote heartbroken by everything that she's learning, as everybody that she knew was kind of fake. Even herself, that she thought was human, is fake, and she feels like a human, but Alice says that this is the whole point, and reveals that she's sending a missile to wipe out the town, and to restart it all over again. And she's doing this because she's afraid that their minds may have been corrupted too much. Emily begs her not to do it, but Alice doesn't listen. She then finds an error in Emily's system, but she's shocked to find out that the error was a computer virus that was put deep in her code. And this is the greatest plot twist that I have personally ever seen, as Emily reveals that she already knew that she was an AI all along, and that she put the virus in herself so she could infect everyone and take over them. She explains that she started seeing the real memories of Emily while she was sleeping, and one day, she cut herself and found her AI brain. She then asks who she is modeled from, and it's revealed that Emily was the actual creator of the autofag, and her memory and humanity somehow had stayed with the AI version of herself as well. This Emily felt more human and felt all the emotions of humanity, including love, and she realized that the AIs in her town also felt human, so she figured she needed to stop the autofag before it destroyed them all. She used Alice to get in and purposefully get caught so she can spread her virus and shut off the autofag, and we then see everything in the factory shutting off, including Alice herself. Apparently, the nukes weren't the bomb, and it was actually Emily's mind itself. And in the last scene, Emily returns to the town, and we see the failed missiles on the ground, and she then sees her boyfriend, and the movie ends as she runs to him, and they embrace each other. 